So I'm concluding the Stripe GraphQL series. I want to go over a quick recap of what we built and then talk about what's next. So we started off this series by building out a registration form and being able to take authentication. So here I can create a user and then I can log in with that same user. And then this is kind of where Stripe comes in. We pretended we had a fake product that the user could buy. So we could click pay with our card and then we could put in our email and then we could pick a credit card number from this test mode list over here. So for example, I could choose my Visa card and this would actually purchase a, and this would be $10, purchase a subscription for this particular user. And so they get charged on their credit card now and they're gonna get charged every month for the $10. And then right here, we show them just the last four digits of their credit card number and allow them to change their credit card number if they want to, to something else. Um, and then we can also cancel the subscription if they don't want to use Stripe or our product anymore. Um, so we can just cancel and then the user goes back to where they were before and they haven't even used it. So pretty much all the little functionality you need to make a very simple subscription service if you wanted to. Now I want to show you how you can take this and actually accept real credit cards because right now we're in test mode and so there's really only thing you can accept is these test credit cards right here. So in your dashboard over here, um, and I don't know if I mentioned this before, you can actually see how much money we've gained and whatnot. So it actually gives you the figures from the test data. But there's this little switch right here called viewing test data and you can turn that on. And what that'll do is it'll actually switch you over to a live um, data and live uh, basically API keys that you can use. But to do that, you first have to activate your account by like putting in your uh, credentials as a company and whatnot. And then you can click go over to developers, go to API keys, and you'll see you'll have some uh, API keys that are for production. And so those production keys will actually charge the user's credit card for real, and it will no longer be testing. So that's pretty much the next step if you want to actually take this Stripe implementation and actually charge users for it. Um, and so that's pretty much it for the Stripe series. If you like this, um, I'm thinking about doing, as you can see, this was a basically a little taster because I just implemented this functionality myself on my own website, but Stripe is capable of a lot more than just a simple subscription service. So if you're interested in more stuff in Stripe, let me know. I'm very interested in doing more Stripe stuff in the future. If that guy, that kind of stuff interests you guys, because there's more to them than just subscriptions. There's also billing uh, yearly, you know, bi-yearly. There's all sorts of different like routines and schedules you can set up and custom payments and take payments through Android Pay um, and also charge the user based on how much they use instead of a monthly fee. Like for example, uh, Slack, for example, charges per user that you have, or you might want to do it based off of they buy a single product and they only want to charge them once. There's lots of different things you can do with this. Um, but that's it for that. And then what's next for me is I really want to do serverless next. I haven't really decided whether I'm going to do serverless, serverless, like do Lambda stuff, or if I'm going to do uh, Amplify and App Sync next. I'm still trying to decide which one I want to start off with. Uh, I definitely want to eventually get to Amplify and AppSync, but I might start with serverless and do like kind of Lambda and try the different cloud functions, or I might just skip over and go straight to it. Haven't decided yet. And I also haven't decided on a project that I want to build with that yet. So I'm going to go back through some of the ideas that I've seen people uh, say before, but also you can let me know in the comments below if there's a project you'd like to see me build with AppSync and uh, Amplify or using just uh, the Lambda GraphQL server and use that from AWS or, you know, Google and Azure also have uh, cloud functions as well. Well, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.